Hi there, Steve Kaufman here to talk about language learning. If you enjoy these videos, please subscribe. And a lot of these videos sort of uh, come to my mind based on experiences that I'm having in my latest uh, language learning endeavor, which right now is Arabic. So today I'm going to talk about mistakes, errors, their role in language learning and what we do about them and other subjects related to errors. So I mentioned on Twitter that I was lined up to pay in a store and the couple behind me were speaking Arabic. So of course my ears pick up. I haven't spoken any Arabic. So I turned to them and I said, you know, I'm learning Arabic, uh, although I can't speak. And then I tried to say that in Arabic. And I said, Ana <laughs> udresu. Uh, al Arabiya, which is wrong because I was supposed to say udrese, uh, udresu, which is learn, udresu, and then lag, uh, boy, I can't even, lahatal la or lahata or whatever, the language Arab, al Arabiya. Um, but, liakan, uh, ana uh, la astatia at to, to talk, which apparently is not the right thing to say either. And so there were some comments uh, uh, correcting it, which is fine. And also I showed an excerpt of me using my uh, iPad to learn Arabic and of course the text-to-speech voice came through. And people also pointed out that the text-to-speech was incorrect in some cases, which is also true. Now, the, of course, okay, so the point here is that to me, it doesn't matter. These corrections are not going to correct me. I will not necessarily improve as a result of this individual correction. The fact that the text to speech is wrong doesn't have a great influence on me because we learn primarily through massive input. Uh, these lessons that I'm using, the mini stories, where I will use the text to speech to give me an idea how the word is pronounced. Um, you know, the number of times I listen to that versus the number of times that I'm on my bicycle or walking around and listening to the actual human voice saying it correctly. You know, that incorrect input is a relatively small amount. It really doesn't matter. I, I, I thank the people for correcting me. I don't, I don't take offense to it, but it's, it's relatively uh, meaningless. And, and the whole idea with, with mistakes, you know, which are a big part of language learning, we have tests, drills, and then you look at the back of the book and you'll see which ones you got right, which ones you didn't get right. And I've always disliked these because it puts pressure on you to get it right. And, and in many cases, you're not yet in a position to get it right. Like very often in these language books, they'll start off in lesson one, they teach you a bunch of stuff and then they right away want to test you on it. And you haven't got much of a chance of getting it right. Uh, one advantage on, uh, on a computer or on my iPad, where we have flashcards, where we ask things, that you get an immediate feedback, it was right or it was wrong, uh, in whatever, which of the five activities that I'm using. So that makes it better. You don't have to wait till the end. And all the while that I'm doing these flashcards where I'm asked questions, I'm getting them wrong, uh, to me is just exposure. It's just interaction with the language. The, the issue of error doesn't matter. And there's a lot of research that's been done by Stephen Krauschen and Benico Mason in Japan, which shows that error correction has little, relatively little impact on improving people's output. That massive input, listening and reading, is far more important than correction. And there are even people who say, well, you know, but kids, they, uh, the only way that kids learn to speak correctly is if their parents correct them, which of course is total nonsense because parents correct very little of their children's speech and children learn from their peers. Otherwise, children of immigrants would speak like their parents, but they don't. They speak like their peers, their friends at school. So I think the whole idea of errors, error correction testing is overdone. In our school system in Canada, we go through 10 years of French instruction with all kinds of tests and probably the better students do well in the tests, and yet at the end of it, very few people can speak. So that errors as a focus of language learning, mistakes, I think it's a mistake to focus on mistakes. Mistakes don't matter. We shouldn't get seven out of 10, five out of 10 on tests. We should just treat interacting with the language as exposure. And 
as I've said before, the language, we start to notice different things at different times, different things kind of click at different times. And when we're aware of certain things, then we start to notice other things. And sometimes we just improve even without noticing the fact that we're improving through additional exposure to the language. Now, I will sometimes do deliberate things at length. For example, I will save phrases that contain a certain grammatical structure that I'm having trouble with so that then I can re review them in a concentrated manner. But just by reviewing them once or five times or 10 times doesn't mean I've corrected my error, uh, but it's part of that exposure. It gives me some concentrated exposure. And at some point, the brain will basically have that click in as being the natural way to say that. So, uh, you know, and I've had the experience as a tutor online in English. Uh, I've mentioned this before, I had a German uh, uh, learner of English who kept on saying Be uh, Berlin for Berlin. And I said, why would you say Berlin? Uh, in, in German it's Berlin. So the accent is on the second syllable. So in English it's just Berlin. Oh, thank you, thank you. And of course, he just continues saying Berlin the whole time. And you can correct, if we're staying with Germans, Germans have a tendency to say, like, I have lived in Canada since many years, which of course is wrong. It copies the German structure. And you can correct them and they'll continue doing that until at some point it just clicks in as being natural. I have lived in Canada for many years. So all I'm saying is that the focus on errors, being concerned about errors, thinking that making mistakes is going to somehow damage you, uh, I think is mistaken. Uh, we need to focus on massive input. And again, uh, through those uh, well-intended, uh, uh, well-intentioned, uh, people who are correcting my Arabic, it's, it's very kind of you. I appreciate the fact that there are people encouraging me in my Arabic. But I think that if I can continue to uh, listen and read and do the various activities that I do at Link, eventually I'll get a natural sense without, without having to remember that I was corrected at some point, I will naturally improve. And some of those things will kick, kick in. So um, there you have it, some thoughts on errors, error correction, the importance of errors, or the lack of importance of errors. It's just part of the process. So thank you for listening. Bye for now.